Welcome, everybody. It is another exciting episode of HomeKit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal and the actual costumer from The Wiggles. It is Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I've seen The Wiggles. I know that show, plus I'm the costumer. So, you know, of course I'm Yes, doing. you created yeah. all of those shirts that look like they were made by the toddlers that they're entertaining. Like, that was <laughs> you. Know your audience, okay? That's the deal. Know your audience. <laughs> appeal to them. So, uh, welcome back, Andrew. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, coming back to the show. Welcome. I'm back to the show. I'm back. We're, you're back. We got news. And uh, you have some secret projects here coming later in the show that uh, is very mysterious. Very mysterious. Yeah, mysterious. Uh, two surprises. So we want to get to that. Uh, we will. Uh, let's get some news first, then we'll get to the secret projects. I do want to mention also, listeners, if you didn't know, uh, Apple Insider Daily podcast is going on. It's actually our friend uh, Charles is hosting that now. And so you should definitely check out the Apple Insider Daily show. That link is in the episode description. If you want just those top headlines every day ju in just a few minutes, uh, it's a great little uh, summary of the day's news. So check that out. Just wanted to plug that right here. All right. Got some news here. I'm not sure if you've heard of this, uh, Andrew, but this came across my my eyeballs. The Nitatmo smart security sensor, it looks like they have a matter-equipped uh, sensor. And, of course, you know our friends at Nitatmo, they're big into HomeKit, so this will – well, it's matter, so you can get into the Home app. But, you know, a lot of this stuff is HomeKit. It looks like this was certified February 21st. It's not available yet, but I imagine that this is coming sometime and another uh, contact sensor is always nice. And I, I think, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, this might be the first matter contact sensor that might be available to us here. Does that sound right? Um, quite should... possibly. So if I'm yeah. remembering, if I'm remembering my history correctly, this was announced mm. like at CES or at like roughly around CES last year, oh, and it it never you know came out. Um, if it's the same one that I just linked you, uh, but yeah, this will be let's a, see, let's see. I mean, actually, isn't the, Oh yeah, there oh, it is. Not. Wait, did the Eve yeah. one get updated? The Eve got updated, didn't it? Oh, that is true. It got updated with matter. Yes, you are correct. Yeah. So the Eve one is there. Yeah. So yeah, the here's first off the tag. shelf with matter, but Eve will be off the shelf, um, very soon if it's not already. Very cool. So a new, a new Nutetma one, hopefully coming very soon now that it is certified. All right, next up, We Am Pro. This is now available on Amazon. Let me go to the tab here. This is something where it's AirPlay 2 receiver, plug-in speakers into the back. Of course, you should watch the show at uh, youtube.com slash homekitinsider because we show <laughs> visuals of everything we're talking about right now. But this is uh, the We Am Pro. You can now buy it right now on Amazon. It's 150 bucks coming in the next week or so, at least where I am, if you get it. And, you know, if you want to... Add some AirPlay 2 functionality to bookshelf speakers or something. It has spit of out or optical out back when that's how I used to call it. Also RCA in and out, coax out. You can plug it into Ethernet. And it looks like, is that USB-C I see, not micro USB? It's USB-C? I think so. I think so. That's yeah, wonderful. This thing is brand new. And I, I love devices like this. Do you remember, Stephen, I rem this mm -hmm. was one of my favorite gadgets. So when the original AirPlay was out, <clears throat> a lot of folks, me, mm -hmm. perhaps you, I'm sure right. our listeners, used the original Airport Express oh, because it yes. had an audio output. Now, <laughs> Absolutely. now, to make it cooler, I had the Griffin 20. Do you remember that thing? Griffin 20? Wait a yeah, minute, wait a minute. It wait was, minute. Yeah, talk to me about it. What was it? Remind me. This, is, I believe, was like a like an amp that right. you would slot your airport express directly into and then oh connect your bookshelf speakers to so it made it like an all-in-one airplay amp to power your speakers <laughs> that's so amazing. cool such a like man this was such a unique very niche product from griffin yeah. at the time and i loved yes. it and i feel like their quality has gone down more in recent years we're seeing more kind of just generic like chargers and stuff out of them but this was yeah. a very good product from them at like their height of their just apple at the height of their power making <laughs> yes yeah um i still have a couple airport yes. express lying around i just don't have any more bookshelf speakers that i really use as much i mean with like right. sonos and the home pods they've kind of taken over a lot of what i used to run wired 
Yeah, for sure. I I had an Airport Express running for a long time. I had a pair of Bose bookshelf speakers that plugged into power on their own. So the Airport, Airport Express didn't need to be a amp, but it, it worked great. Just plug in the headphone jack, Airport Express. I was able to use it from my Apple TV, like just stream the audio from Apple TV to the Airport Express. It was uh, really awesome. But these are good. Now, my question to you, Andrew, was, uh, so this is the Wii M. It's now available, 150 bucks. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is also very similar in use case to the Belkin Sound Form, uh, mm-hmm. which was originally $100 on Amazon. As I look at it with my eyeballs right now, it is $75, 25% off. Also adds AirPlay 2. Doesn't have as much um, connection options, but it does yeah, have... this is like the new right. one's more like a pro version because you have so many options for connectivity and stuff. Um, right. But there, like this isn't the first AirPlay receiver to hit the market. Right, there right, are right, several. Right, right. Um, Belkins is very nice, nice and sleek. The yeah. new WM, more yeah. port options and configurability. Uh, but there are others out right. there. You can likely find cheaper ones. I don't like to go like super cheap just because I feel like you get what you pay for. <laughs> but yeah, or yeah. you can uh, pay seven hundred dollars for the Sonos amp. <laughs> That's, there we go. You also have that option if uh, if you would like. But uh, but no, no, that's cool. The Wii M Pro is now available, so very cool. Now, you have uh, in here in the articles, there's a bunch of new Sony TVs that have been announced, both with AirPlay 2 and HomeKit. Now, uh, you're a Sony guy. I mean, Sony is uh, it's too rich for my blood a lot of times. I'm just like, oh, you know, I'll go with that TCL. I'm fine. But uh, these new TVs look pretty sweet. And also HomeKit, like you'd actually be able to add these to yes. HomeKit. Is that right? Yes. Oh, yes. Wonderful. So a couple different things. So yeah, I'm definitely a Sony guy for a few reasons. Um, these TVs have me very excited. Um, Sony didn't announce any TVs at CES this year. Like they made a big thing. Like their announcement was that they right. weren't announcing TVs. And yep. you know, here we are. We're in March basically, and we've got some TVs. There's yes, there's HomeKit, which allows you to turn the TVs on and off to switch mm-hmm. inputs. Okay. All of that just via Siri and via HomeKit. So that's really handy to have. That's one of my favorite things. Um, besides that, it, they do have native AirPlay 2 built in. If you are mm. just going to try to cast audio and video up to your television without having an Apple TV or other device, sure. then you have the Apple TV app is built in. So you can stream all these great shows like the new season of Ted Lasso that's about to drop in mm-hmm. like two weeks. So like yeah, yeah. that's coming out. Yep. The other thing for me that's not as much smart home related is that they have never, for some reason, never done anything specific with the PlayStation. But now they actually mm. have like a a made for PlayStation Five branding or optimized for PS Five branding that they're going to start putting on certain sets. And there's like mm. actually like yeah, there's like more of like a gaming hub, and they're going to be able to have like an an optimized mode for gaming on the PS5, stuff like that. So for me, as a PlayStation 5 user, I'm excited about that. But yeah, I mean, these these are great mm. TVs. I'm very excited. There's a whole range of them. So I'm not sure what, you know, you'll end up linking, Steven, in uh, the show notes, because you can link as much or as little as we want to. But I have the actual sure. PR from Sony linked and our article that just kind of right. summarizes more of the Apple focus features, but several uh, news organizations got to go hands on with these TVs like we hmm. would have at CES. So like Gizmodo, Verge, uh, Digital Trends, Forbes, and several others all have hands on with these new sets. If there's anything that you want to kind of see more in detail, see some of these new features, the new processor, how fast they are. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that they're introducing here that's neat to see. So gotcha. a few different hands on options uh, if we want to link to any of those, Steven. Okay, yeah, we'll include some of those in the show notes. You guys can check them out. But hey, new Sony TVs with HomeKit. HomeKit. Yes. Uh, this next HomeKit. It's next news: the Akara FP2 presence sensor, which uh, we've talked about before. It looks like it is coming. This is a pre-sales launch in China, supposedly a March release. Uh, our friend Shane Watley, who's actually on the show last week, uh, he actually has one of these in hand. I don't know who he, what mob boss he paid off to get one of these. But I want one of these, and I'm hoping it comes to the U.S. very soon. Again, this is a presence sensor where different than motion just detects if you're in the room, even if you're very, very still, even asleep, it would know if you're in the room. And so I'm, I'm all about the presence center, se- centers, presence sensors, and uh, I'm hoping they, uh, they come here soon. So that looks cool. 
Uh, now, last couple of pieces of news. The second beta of iOS 16.4 is out. Um, I don't know if there was anything specific home-wise. I know 16.4 has the intercom, the steps for shortcuts, things like that. Did you see anything in this second beta that was uh, nope. noteworthy? Okay. Just news that it's out. I mean, because obviously 16.4 yeah. is bringing back like the new home architecture, things like that. But there's nothing yeah. new in this second beta that's <laughs> specific to HomeKit users. We got new page animations back to the Books app. We have more Apple classical music references, other random yeah. odds and ends, but nothing uh, smart home related. Just uh, chugging along, getting closer to the release of the new update. Listen, the, the Apple Music classical saga, it's got me on pins and needles because it has been, I think, two years since Apple acquired Prime Phonic. Apple said in a press release, we're going to make we're going to make an app. It's going to be, you know, standalone classical app. It was in their press release. But then a couple months ago. Prime Phonic in the press release that they released at that time removed the text that said, oh, there's going to be, you know, a, a separate app. And so there was a bunch of news that like, well, maybe it's not happening because it's been several years. Prime Phonic removed it from their thing. But now in the second beta, uh, someone uncovered in the code mentioned again. And so I think that Apple is just trolling me specifically, individually, uh, about this because maybe I'm one of the three people that care. But I'm really hoping it uh, comes to fruition. I mean, the, the difference could just be that it's all baked into the one app, which is kind of what it sounded like based yeah. on the code snippet. Like, we're not going into that whole thing, but literally the code snippet read, to listen in Apple Music Classical, you need to install Apple Music. So, like, I don't know if they just require both apps or if it's somehow a subsection of Apple Music, yeah. like the main app, I don't know. But, I mean, they're still doing something, yeah. one way or the other. I mean, they're doing something, whatever that is. I hope it's something good. That's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, last news, the Hubitat, there's a new model came out that is the C8. And uh, we've talked about Hubitat before. It gets Z-Wave devices into Home app or Home kit. And this new C8 model, it's got Z-Wave Plus 800, Zigbee, 3.0, external antennas, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. USB-C, always nice to see, pun intended, uh, oh, rather boy. than micro USB. Yep, yeah, that's right. Got the puns in there. But, yeah, new model is out. You can buy now. Let's see. Yeah, the C8, it is $150. It looks like it's on sale for this launch. And uh, you can get it. I've actually had a couple people uh, ask about their HomeKit setups and, you know, about Z-Wave devices and stuff. I mean, this is kind of the hub that's available for you to get those in there. Like, yes, there's the homey one and uh, like the Thinka hub, but those are not widely available. Some are still in pre-order status. And so this Hubitat seems to be like, if you want to get some zero devices in the home kit now, uh, this Hubitat update looks like uh, the hub to get. So do you, do you have one of these? I don't have one of these to try out. No, I don't. And so I can't remember who it was. It might be one of the ones up for pre-order or another company altogether, but they had kind of pitched me like reviewing one of these. And my main kind of takeaway is like, there's not a ton of Z-Wave devices that I had a big interest in putting into my home, especially that I wanted to be running sure. yet another hub to enable that. Like that, that's kind of where sure. I was sitting. Um, like there's a ton of options, but a lot of them feel fairly generic. I think if I was doing something like trying to put all new like contact sensors in or something like that, and I was looking for a more low cost option, something like this would be an option would be maybe the better choice because it would be cheaper to buy some of these um, just Z wave products versus all the individually certified home kit ones or something like that. Right. I mean, but not like the ones from like, Acara are that expensive anymore. So it, I don't know. For me, I'm just very on the fence if it's actually worth it to go the route yeah. of the Z-Wave Pub. But I haven't had a big interest thus far. Yeah, I think for the, the people that are asking me, they're either moving into a house or recently bought a house where there's been like there's previous there's like there's already contact sensors around maybe it was from a security system or the person before was using z-wave devices and was like do i rip all these out or do i just purchase all new contact sensors and for those in that kind of situation you know if these you know you double check to see make sure that the z-wave or zigbee devices will actually talk to this hub but if you can use devices that are already in a place you're moving into you know rather than having to buy all new contact sensors like if they were part of a security system Maybe this would be beneficial uh, so you can get a bunch of devices kind of in your home app quickly 
and not have to, you know, put a bunch of other stuff up. So anyway, I think if it's like that kind of situation, maybe it's more worth it. But yeah, I, I'm down. I, I just look for HomeKit everywhere. Just give me the HomeKit or the Apple Home. We've had lots of people uh, talk, <laughs> mention different home uh, title ideas, Andrew. I don't know if you've seen some of these come oh, across yeah. the I've social media. Oh, yeah, I've gotten emails and tweets and uh, lots of <laughs> options. <laughs> I thought uh, one of the better ones, this is Jerry with a G on Twitter. He said, uh, just call ourselves Apple Home Pod, like Apple Home Podcast, just Apple Home Pod, but a space between the home and the pod. So there's no like trademark or, or a <laughs> copyright issue. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was great. The <laughs> Apple HomePod. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think Apple would have a problem with that at all. <laughs> yeah, this is no problem. Yeah, I'm sure it'll help our right, SEO too. To your... If anyone searches for the for Apple HomePod, right. we would come up <laughs> right. at the top of the results. Boom. Top result. Boom. The Apple HomePod. There it is. All right, before uh, we get to your secret project, we want to thank our first sponsor, ExpressVPN. And I know what you're probably thinking, why would you go to a VPN or something when you can just use incognito mode? But listen, I know when I travel, like if I'm going to airports, hotels, sometimes those public Wi-Fi and cafes, I like to use myself a, a good VPN app. And ExpressVPN is the one that I go to. Because also, if you don't use a VPN, you know, your internet service provider or, again, whatever hotel, cafe you're at, they can pretty much see all the traffic that's going through their uh, their server deals. I also had a situation, I don't know, uh, they didn't tell me to say this, this is in like, the notes or whatever, but I had a friend who wanted to uh, stream some baseball games, and I don't know if you're familiar, Andrew, but sometimes games are blacked out based on location. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say this is a sanctioned use, but with a VPN like ExpressVPN, unlike even something like iCloud Re Private Relay, you could be like, you know, maybe I'm tuning in from uh, Michigan. I don't know. Maybe I'm, uh, you know, I'm actually in this state, but I'm tuning in from another state. And then all of a sudden, games are not blocked out. And this, this was a total non-techie person. And I showed them the power of, uh, of this kind of VPN. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that all the time. So listen, uh, it doesn't matter who your internet service provider is. ISPs in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. If you didn't know that, you probably knew that. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure server so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. And ExpressVPN keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, like I don't really notice even when ExpressVPN is running, it doesn't hurt any kind of internet speed. You can still stream video, all of that stuff. And ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, smart TVs. So there's no excuse not to be using it. So protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. And you can visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash homekit. You get three extra months for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash homekit, expressvpn.com slash homekit to learn more. Thanks, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this episode. All right, Andrew, secret projects. What, what do you got here? Okay, Surprise. I've got two. I'm Which ready. do you want to see first, the one on my right side or the one on my left side? <laughs> Which one are you going for? <laughs> left. Left. Over Let's here. Let's do the left side. Let's see it. Oh, my goodness. The jealousy has risen in me. Is that a Robo Rock? Tell me that's the Robo Rock. This is a Robo Rock. Yeah. Yeah. This is the S8 <sighs> Pro Ultra. I'm so mad right now. Just announced at I'm, CES. I'm so mad. You got the whole dock the and everything? The successor... Oh, I do. This oh is the successor God. to our widely recommended S7 Max V Ultra. So, um, Roborock, where is mine? Where is my <laughs> my Roborock S8 Ultra Pro Max uh, M4? Where is it? I was hoping. I hope I was supposed to show this thing off. No one said not to. So, you know, um, <laughs> it, was, it can't be under embargo. I mean, they have it all over their website. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, fine. a few things here for anyone who wants a refresher on uh, oh. the biggest changes here to the to the S8 Pro Ultra, other than the confusing naming scheme. Um, the <laughs> mop here at the bottom now has oh, two man. different motors in here. So, Jeez. I think this peels off. This is probably going to sound great for a podcast. So I'm not yeah, going to do great. it. Yeah, it's great. But ASMR. there are. There are two uh, vibration motors in here, so it should scrub basically twice as much as the prior generation. There are two roller. Yes, so you're gonna get more. I want, I more, want the two. Uh, I want the two air brushes from the, from the suction there. Ugh. This also raises up and down, which you can kind of see a little bit. But this goes up and down, so basically it can lift up 
the vacuum when not in use so it doesn't oh like my goodness that or uh track over anything where it's not being used um then we have the um more suction on this one increase the suction power compared to the prior generation then the dock has a hot air blower so once yeah. you're done like cleaning the mop on here in the dock it's going to go ahead and dry it all off so that way things are like dry and you're not going to have like more bacteria growing stuff like that and the dock was itself redesigned so it now has a more like seamless front look to it if you're going to if you want to pull it up to show folks yes i know um I know. but the original one which isn't bad <laughs> you know what i don't want to pull, i don't want to pull it up but you know what you know i'll tell you what sucks is that i don't have one that's the real suck power yeah i, that's, um, I want I one also that's the deal <laughs> Yeah, I'll pull it up. Hold on a second. But yeah, yeah keep, so keep, the, she keeps showing it off. It has um, a redesigned yeah, dock. So the S7 Max V Ultra that we very much like has the empty wash fill station. This has the same thing, and there are lower options if you don't want that whole situation. But the front is now more like one piece, which I think looks a lot better than the other one did. They've also moved to a white aesthetic, which has pros and cons. Like, we're not going to just praise everything for the sake of praising things. This does show debris on here. So like, if you have a lot of pets, like, dog hair constantly which is super fun filming and photographing this but i do think that the mm. white look is better like i think it does look really nice like i covered that narwhal one which is really cool and i like the look out of it apparently there is that black option still if you like that but i think the yeah. white looks really cool i i like the white look of this yeah. one um just it looks like cleaner nicer lighter i don't know but everyone yeah. has options exactly <sighs> Harder, so, yeah, better, so faster, stay tuned stronger. for like like uh, just, you know video like review right. and everything like that. But uh, this is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. Oh my <laughs> goodness, I'm so jealous right now. This this thing is amazing. I I will say though, my <laughs> S7 Max V Ultra Plus Pro Max is still amazing. Like that thing is really incredible. Like I show it off all the time. People are like, it's amazing how it cleans. And so now with this double brush and the mop heating, oh my goodness, these, they're going to make me do it. They're going to make me do it. All right. So that was an amazing surprise. Uh, I'm definitely jealous of that. Now, what, now that was on your okay. left. So show me what I is on turn it on your first, right. Ready? What is on your right? What are you hiding off camera? Yeah. Turn it on. <laughs> what is happening? What's happening? What in the world? Of all the things, oh my this goodness! Is the the things like from the future, humidifier, is that a humidifier from Smart Me. Look at how pretty that is, Stephen. Oh my goodness! Ridiculous. That does look really cool. Oh, it's <laughs> mesmerizing. Really cool. <laughs> oh man, that's fun to look Basically, at. Basically, there's a. It is. Oh my goodness! Okay, there's a pump so, in the bottom. So the bottom of this is a is a a water chamber. There's a pump in the bottom, and it goes right up the center spout, if you can kind of see what's in the center. And there's a spinning disc. So the water gets pumped mm. out onto that disc, which spins at a very high speed and flings it against the walls of the humidifier to create this rain effect. Wow. And I think it looks, it looks so pretty. Amazing. You can probably hear a little bit of the fan going, which is water hitting the sides. That's really cool. And I think that's also very soon. And yeah, it's yeah. it's also a legit home kit, um, home kit certified wow. humidifier. And compared to all the other humidifier. ones that we have tried, while I oh, like the Vocal Link yeah. ones and they were like the first ones in the market, they I always had a problem with them like getting things wet around them. Like they would occasionally like spit. So this one right. does not do that. There is no <laughs> like there's no uh, spit coming out of yeah. the device. The top of it has a display that I can't show you without tilting the device, but there's a little display up there that shows you the current humidity levels. Sure. And you can just dial in the humidity that you want and it'll wow. adjust it to that. So Jeez. All that's controllable in home kit. You can control the fan. And there's two different versions. You can actually have it on humidifying versus, I think, just the rain effect if you just wanted to have that. Um, it comes off into, like, three different pieces. So, like, oh. this top part here comes off. That cool rain. This is probably, like, 
thing is wet, so I'm trying not to like make a mess of things. But yeah, oh, the top comes off. In the middle, mm. you have a filter. Right. Right there. I didn't just pee for anyone listening. This is the filter. <laughs> yeah. ASMR and then the water. bottom is the basin. <laughs> it's got ASMR a very large water basin on it. Yeah, they do okay. recommend using like purified water, which makes sense because I feel like you wouldn't want like scaling build up on this these clear sides. So that that would probably be a, a good thing. But then yeah, it just all clips back right. together. Good to go. Sensors are on the back uh, oh. for measuring the humidity and like the temperature cool. in the room. And everything works in HomeKit. I'm not sure, Stephen, if you can confirm or deny while you had the site pulled up. Wow. Is this thread? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can hop into is this to the thread? EDAP well, and let's, look. Let's but I adjusted this up yesterday, and thing. I had not fully um, you know, went through everything here. So let me check. It does not say okay. thread anywhere on the page. Did a little command F. So possibly not. Does the humidifier and temperature or the humidity and temp? I believe so. Does that show up yes. in HomeKit as like individual sensors that you could then okay. automate or whatever? I don't That's see cool. I don't That's see cool. thread. I don't see this yeah, on no, no my thread, I don't think. thread list. So it is, I believe it's Wi Fi enabled because I know yeah, I was no going, went through the a Wi Fi yeah. onboarding process. So at least Wi Fi. Um, which I am very happy with. I don't have any problems with Wi-Fi. It's been connected yeah. the entire time that I go to use it. It's responsive when I go to do things. This is super cool. It's bigger than other humidifiers, but I think between the looks and the That's functionality, perfect. this is this is very legit. This is super yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You got some cool stuff over there. That was uh, year two for two. I did not. I did not know that these two, that the secret surprises were going to be amazing. Two for two. Yeah, here's the. Those are pretty sweet. If you want that's, to see what the nice. uh, app looks the like, the play, I'm, can the camera yeah, focus? Good. So, uh, here in the home app, you have your standard like control there. So on and off button at the bottom, and then oh yeah, uh, adjustments, and then we scroll down, and you've got there's the doorbell. Thank you. <laughs> That's how the Arlo doorbell works. <laughs> uh, if anyone was wondering, look at that. This home oh, hot at, the at the moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can see like the name and ch- yeah. change like the icons to it. Uh, you can have like the fan speed. You can adjust that up and down. And then there is, um, yeah. you can turn on the fan speed on or off. There's the relative wow. humidity in the room. Uh, scene automations, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm excited. This is cool. This is That's very cool. cool. That's cool. That is very cool. Is do you have any info on the availability of pricing? See because it looks like it says coming soon. What I have get it in yet. my email. Uh, all right. Well, while while you do that, let me thank our second and final sponsor, and then when we come back, we'll we'll find out if you can buy this thing anytime soon. We want to thank our friends at Collide. You guys know Collide. <laughs> uh, Andrew Collide is at Andrew's door. They're ringing the doorbell right now. Collide is saying hello. If you're an Okta user. Uh, this is them at the door. Hello? Just imagine me as uh, being Clyde at the door. Hello. If you're an Octa user. Hey, it's Andrew. Oh, you your entire... um, I'm recording okay. the podcast right Wait, now, Andrew's so I can't come to the, the door. door. Um, okay, thank you, man. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Andrew's live answering his doorbell. <laughs> that was a live demo of the Arlo doorbell uh, camera call. Amazing. Uh, so anyway, thank, that was Collide. They were at the door. Uh, they were saying, hello, are you an Okta user? <laughs> then, uh, because you can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. How is that? Well, if a, de- if a device isn't compliant, the user can't log in to your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, which is device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Unsecured devices are logging into your company's apps willy-nilly. That's not in the script. I added the Uh. willy-nilly. Uh, because there's nothing there to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user, gives them instructions to fix it, and if they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. Wall comes down. Well, Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and more importantly, 100% fleet compliance. So visit collide.com slash homekit to learn more or book a demo. That's K-O-L-I-D-E 
com slash homekit and uh, thank you for coming to the door collide and we'll see you next time now um so this is what i have <laughs> has so andrew found I a pricing they were actually targeting to ship this before the end of the year in terms of 2022 so you know this just showed up a couple okay. of days ago so manufacturing delays mm. or uh you know china's uh, mm. holiday they always have the beginning of the year so whatever the delay was I am guessing this is going to be available soon. So they say they were planning to avail offer it in uh, Costco before expanding other availability. And the original, what the Costco. proposed retail price was two forty nine. Okay. So whether that still holds, I will have to let everyone know. We're gonna get a follow up, and I can give more information on pricing and availability. Okay. Very cool. Well, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that that looks pretty cool. I might I might get one. You know, all the humidifiers we have are kind of like these little cheapo weird things. I don't know if I showed and, this uh, on the show before, this, Stephen. This one but actually this looks is cool. a very good and, partner you know, product to this. Though it doesn't have like native home kit or smart control. I might have okay. shown this before, but this guy. Sure. No, is that, a, that is a head it's of actually moss trapped in a plastic jar. What is that? Yeah, so this all comes off. Oh, okay. This is a, this is an air of purifier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they're using a lot oh. of sustainable materials, recycled really? plastics in the base, um, a lot of like uh, palm palm material. This is moss here at the top. So this offers your your wide or your your large mm. particle filtration goes to a second filtration down there. Then like in the bottom bottom, there's a like a HEPA filter that it goes through. Yeah, so the, and these are all supposed to be just it's a very wow. sustainable okay. air purifier and it just looks really pretty. I like this a lot. Um you can connect this to a smart plug. So it just plugs in like USB and then connect it to a smart plug, then based on your air quality you can turn this thing on and off. But I like that. Hmm. And it seems like a good partner product. So you got a rainforest humidifier and an all That's natural cool. eco-friendly uh purifier. So humidifier <laughs> right. and purifier. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like doing photosynthesis right there, live on your desk. Just the plants, just carbon dioxide in, oxygen out. It's amazing. All right. Well, man, so much cool stuff. I want to know how to get some of this stuff. Anyway, okay. Uh, that S8 Pro, S8 Pro Ultra is going to tempt me uh, for a long time. We'll see. <laughs> well, what's the what's the secondary market on Robo Rock? Stevens. You think Robo somebody Rock. will buy the SV S Max V Ultra? If, if, it, if you want to buy my Roborock, excellent condition. I take great care of it. have lots of spare parts. You let me know. Yeah. Reach out. You can buy it for a steal. You can buy uh, my SV Max V Ultra Pro Max. Uh, okay. Anyway, and now you have uh, some – do you have some baby yeah, tech? So or you, I know you're in gonna, the future, Steve, we've talked about this, Steven, but uh, in an episode in the future, my wife is hopefully going to be able to join us, and we're going to talk through a lot of the baby tech stuff that we've gotten for our little one. Now that it's been like four months, we have a, a decent understanding of what we like and what we don't like in terms of baby tech and things that we didn't think that we needed, that we did, things that we thought we needed, but we didn't. Baby tech. Um, all of that kind of stuff. So I feel like we should do another follow-up. We're going to mm. go through those things. But I want to hear from people out there who either have questions or suggestions, oh. whether there's things like, hey, I've seen this product. Is it worth it? Or... Um, we got one of these smart things and we loved it. All of that kind of stuff to kind of crowd some source, some questions uh, or comments before we get to that episode sometime in the future. I don't know. We don't have like a date for that yet, but you know, Steve and I will work on that, but I, I just wanted to get sure. some ideas from people before we got there. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. Well, send them in Mastodon, Twitter, email, all of that. You can look in the show notes, send your baby tech questions all right let's hit some uh, listener questions we've had some uh, building up for the past couple of weeks uh the first one you've had yeah, and this isn't so much a question but jay as is that a question you like got a comment or a psa so we had so jay merrick emailed us and he mm. was talking about how he has an apartment building and this is becoming more and more prevalent in the united states when the isp will have a partnership deal with the um apartment complex and they will offer shared Wi-Fi. So you oh, pay yeah. in, it's less money, and you then have Wi-Fi coverage over the entire property, including in your home 
and on the ground. And you're basically just sharing with everyone else who is in the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. That way, like you're not getting your own account or your own, you know, hardware and stuff. You can just use all the access points that are already there that just blanket everything. So on like a, on a high level, it sounds pretty decent. Like, right. Like you just get Wi-Fi everywhere. It's less price. You don't have to buy any additional hardware. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. sound like good benefits? So he was but... writing in, they were writing in sure. to basically tell, tell us how like, there's yeah. device caps. Like on some of these plans, you could have like a 20 or a 40 yeah. device limit. And depending on your smart home, you could mm. exceed these very, very quickly. Yeah. And people may, they may not either notice device caps or mm. they may not think about their smart home devices as counting towards that humidifier this is on your wi-fi our our, our garden mm. cameras like so many of these things right are yeah cameras so, leviton switches i'm not yeah. saying that there's like necessarily a solution but just something yeah. to be wary of before signing up for one of these like whole apartment isp sharing things um it sounds like a good deal I'm also curious in those situations though, like, do you, is there a separate network name yeah, I don't know. password I, for I, each I resident don't know. or is it literally uh, just one? Yeah. I, I don't think you would have one, one password for everyone. Then you're literally like, you like, you log on your computer and you could see like everything else That's on weird. the network, every other computer and stuff on the network. I feel like that would be bad. Maybe mm. it's more of like, maybe yeah. there's like some, some WPA you certification just... or not certification, but, um, uh, like some login right. credentials, like on like a college campus right, or exactly. something where you have to like log in with your username or you're at a freaking hotel and you had to log in with like your room number before you have access. So like maybe right. it's something like that, but oh. I don't know. I, I would just maybe stay away from it. If you're yeah. going to have some smart home tech, that's if you're in an apartment, maybe you don't have as much anyway, but they definitely hmm. have an issue, which is why they're uh, kind of letting me know to let Everyone else, know yeah, and think about that's... this before signing up. Should probably that's, use a yeah. VPN, is what you're saying. I would have a lot of questions when it came to security <laughs> and like shared network devices. I, I would be very curious. <laughs> I I was gonna say it. I mean, that was a ironic uh, coincidence. You got ExpressVPN as a sponsor today, but I'm just saying, like, if everyone's sharing the same thing i don't know yeah that's weird and also if you have to do a captcha every time you log into something like i don't know if that would even work for smart home stuff you know having that kind of into your name and room number but anyway um yeah if you have that kind of setup listeners out there or viewers let us know that's that's a curious deal uh now this question came from steve baldwin on mastodon he got the new level lock plus with home key he really loves it he has a just Kind of an awkward use case question, though, is sometimes if you walk up to the door, you know, there's no seemingly immediate, like, visual cue to let you know whether it's locked or unlocked. And so if by chance it's actually unlocked, you walk up, tap your watch or tap your phone, it will then lock it. And now you're locked out. And then you got to tap it again and unlock it again. And so he was wondering, is there any way to add some kind of visual cue or maybe prevent, like, you know, be able to tell quickly is the door locked or unlocked? I mean, there's probably a solution. You know, you could do I don't, like, but I run into the exact same issue and it's different, annoying. like, um, for sure, 100%. Like push cut things or like, like we were running out of here before you walk up to the door. Um, to, like, but, like, oh, that's probably pretty cumbersome. Like, nice you could just like, look up and see. And, like, wait, there was like a little red or not or green door, yeah, locked or unlocked. But I mean, the simple thing is just try to open the door first, but then it looks stupid. Like you try to open it locked and then do the thing. But I totally am on the same page. It is super annoying, and then it's it's not it's not quick. Then at that point, because you have to like wait for it to finish. I'm that this is a problem for me. It's when I'm in a rush. It's yeah, when I've forgotten yeah. something and I'm running out of the house, something like that. And it is never mm. ideal. But I I I I don't know what the solution is. I don't want right. a status light. <laughs> Basically, this is definitely a problem for me too. I don't I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, for sure. Well, another related home key kind of just someone pointed out, this is EMMO on Twitter, sent a DM, 
And uh, he has a, sent a screenshot, or they sent a screenshot showing that a family room member has, like, locked a door specifically. Now, I don't have any locks that support home key just yet, and so I don't get these kind of notifications. But apparently if you have, you know, other members of your family as a part of your home, you know, you've invited them, whatever, and you have a, a home key lock, like the Level Lock Plus or the Schlage Encode, that you actually get a notification saying who unlocked or locked the door. Do you get these kind of notifications, Andrew? With you and Faith, I have, I've not paid that much attention, uh, to be okay. honest. <laughs> so I, I'm going to pay attention now and see if I do. But I think it's, I mean, it's definitely good if it if it is a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, really I'm, a thing. There's screenshots, but I like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks really cool. I, I'm not able to check it, but let us know uh, next time, maybe if you see that. And then uh, last thing, James K H B D. On Twitter, you know, we were talking about lawnmowers and such uh, a couple episodes ago, maybe. And so he sent this link to Yarbo, and uh, this thing looks ridiculous. Like this is an, <laughs> this is wild, wild stuff. So this is a robot lawnmower, leaf blower, and snow blower. There's basically like three attachments that can go on the front of this thing, and it can do all of that. It can mow, it can blow, and it can snow. And that's wild. <laughs> like this, this, I had not heard of this before. Uh, you know, not home kit or anything, obviously, but whoa, this thing looks wild. And I guess, you know, if you want to, uh, have like a robot army taking care of your yard in the snow and in the summertime, like this is the deal. Have you heard of this thing before? No, this looks super cool. I'm super interested. That looks really neat. Uh, I think the whole like, like smart lawnmower thing is going to take off. Like, I mean, we've talked about how like, apparently it's like incredibly prevalent in, in Europe and just not in the U S and I think we're going to see a lot more of these things. I think people are going to start doing them, <laughs> using them more. This looks really cool to me. It looks so cool. Even the leaf blowing and stuff too. Like, uh, no, well, now this is not inexpensive. $4,400, <laughs> uh, for the lawnmower. For so. just the, just the lawnmower <laughs> part. Just the lawnmower part. So not cheap, but this, I mean, it literally has treads like a tank. Like this thing is serious. So if you, the snow blower, this thing is amazing. It's got like a little pipe blowing the snow out the side, $4,800. So basically $5,000 after tax and stuff for the snow blower. I mean, this thing looks wild. Amazing. Uh, I don't know if anybody has one of these out there, but Wow. That's pretty cool. We'll put a link in show notes if you want to uh, drop a cool 5k on one of these uh <laughs> on one of these yard right. bays. But that's 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 pretty wild. So, very cool. Well, <clears throat> listeners, viewers, let us know uh baby tech questions for Andrew. Uh if you're getting a Oh, yeah, are you saying you have something else? How much cool stuff do you have today, Andrew? What in the world? I, there's that? nothing really to sh there's not I don't have anything to share on this, but uh stay tuned for uh, a review soon. I just wanted to show you, Stephen. This is that new Ring dash cam. Oh, my god! I saw this at CES. I'm going to install this. We're going to try it out. Two cameras. This one faces forward. This slides into your dash. This one faces forward. This here is a U-facing camera that you can also cover up. So if you want it for the privacy, wow. don't use it. Um, it's got Amazon Assistant stuff like built in. But it's it's USB C. It slots right in. Like I love the installation from this because you just pop it like right in to like that crevice between your glass and your dash. You just slide it right in there. Oh, faces forward. Slick. No, um, you know, big thing hanging out from your front. Super easy to route the cord right along the front. Pl plugs into your um, your onboard data port, your OBD two port, and you're good to go. This is going to be fun, uh, wow. so stay tuned. I'm going to install a Ring product, Stephen. I'm going to install a Ring product, so we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> I would trust it in my car more than for than my for house. For sure, so, 100%. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Very cool. So stay tuned for that. Send us your questions, comments, projects, all of that in the YouTube comments, or you can tweet, Mastodon us, email us. All that is in the show notes as well. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll catch you next time. See you guys.